you establish, God has established you to be a preacher, and you go, oh, God, what am I going to preach? Oh, God. And that's when you were a concern about how to meet and greet the people that you're preaching to. You're concerned about whether or not you look good, uh, you're going to do all right. You're concerned about your status and your situation. And so that's a natural uh, progression in anything that we do. You, you, you kind of worry about that. But then I never knew you come to a time and a point like right now where I'm just excited about what God's going to do. I don't know. I'm excited about it. But if he don't do it, you can't take away my joy because I already got the excitement. Amen. Now, I got excited this morning uh, when I saw the church saying amen. When I saw the people in the church excited about God and ministry. It's so good that we don't have to do this thing all by ourselves. My message today is when I was a child, I spoke as a child. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. Now, you know, that's a message that you, when you think about it, you say, well, you know, what am I going to get out of that? But what is God going to give us out of that? Come that's on, what God. we need to look at. And not, not only that, not only that, it's talking about thinking. When I was a child, I spoke as a child. That means I thought as a child. Uh -huh. I spoke as a child and I understood as a child. That means my understanding was as a child. So a lot of things you're looking at in the world today, you're looking at a lack of understanding. You're looking at people that still thinking about uh, thinking like their children, and you're looking at a lot of people that's no longer thinking like like children because they have become adults in the world. But they have lost their mind. Wow! They have lost their mind. Instead of getting the mind of Christ, uh -huh. instead of getting their woman's mind or their man's mind, they just got out of the childlike stage and they have lost. Their mind. They say the, they say the dumbest things. Uh huh. They think things that don't add up, don't make no sense, no rhyme, no reason, no understanding. Come on, and man. then they'll get mad with you because you don't think like they do. Thank oh, God. Right. When a man becomes confident in his own thoughts because they're based on the Word of God, that's uh -huh. what to me spiritual growth is. That's what to me growth. Right. When a man understands. That his mind is based on the mind of Christ, yes, the Word Lord. of God. God came into yes. earth as a man. Yes. He took the form of a body. Yes. Hallelujah. He did not think with robbery to equal himself with God because he was God Amen. in flesh, but he was not offended to equal himself with Lord. man because once he put on that earthly body, he was as much as man as, as man is, yes, or as Adam is. So Christ had a job to do, but nobody understood it. Glory. My God, hallelujah. So even we got this verse by Paul, the scripture, but Paul said, when I was a child, I spoke as a child. So even after Christ had did the work that it took him 42 generations to come to the world to do, even as he ascended to heaven, uh -huh. and left the church of mission, now he left the apostles to try and explain to the church what he was doing here. Amen. What was he doing here? And we're still talking about Jesus. And the thing about it is, we it comes a time when we got to understand that it's already done. Come on, Pastor. It's already done. Already. We're going through the emotions. We're going through the emotions of growing up. Yeah. We're going through the emotions of taking out daily bread every uh -huh. day for Christ to give us out yeah. daily bread. You know, God has given some people a whole loaf. Amen. You know, some people get daily bread, but he didn't give me a whole loaf. Uh -huh. And it ain't my bread, it's somebody else's bread I'm using. Well, well, well. <laughs> I don't want to go. Yeah, it's somebody else's bread. Why? Uh -huh. Because as a man thinks, so is he. And it's not so much a, you know, everything. That chair you sitting on, you want... You don't need that chair in heaven. Uh -uh. That chair you're sitting on, you don't need that chair in heaven. And in fact, when you get to heaven, you'll probably be able to praise God a lot longer. Amen. When you get to heaven, you're not going. There's not going to be any sorrow. It's going to be joy unspeakable. Joy. You're not going to be thinking about. See, people don't really know what heaven is like, and they go, "Well, we can't know what's going on in the earth because we would be." Sorrowful, so evidently we have no knowledge of going on in heaven. That's not that's not scripture to me because the 
slave during the tribulation. Yeah. And they were at the altar and they say, how long, oh God? How long, oh God, before you avenged our blood? So they were talking about, when is God going to go down there and take care of them thugs? Yes, they took care of them, they're in heaven. So there's yes, a whole sir. lot of things people think that don't add up yeah. with God. But the, but the bottom line is the man is messed up because of his thinking. And thinking is so easy if you get some, uh, what do you call When you can't move a piece of or something on a car, is stuck, you get some of that stuff, WD-40. Yeah. WD-40. Yeah. That's what we need, some WD-40, because we are stuck in our thinking. Just because we think it don't mean the way it is. Come on, God. Hallelujah. So many people, like, they look at their situation, and they think they got to do something about their situation when the situation has already been dealt with, already been taken care of. We're not here on earth to worry about Satan stopping us. Be here on earth to stop Satan. Amen. And in order to stop Satan, mm -hmm. you have to think a certain way. You can't think like a child. No. You can't be one of them that, child, you done lost your mind. There's so many people out there now that have lost their mind. Yes, sir. No reason. I, I mean, if you could see some of the people out there and they give advice to other people. Mm -hmm. I've seen people come in this church that didn't know anything about God at all in this church right here. Didn't know anything about God. And we gave them tapes and we gave them some of the best teachers and we, I'm talking about things I personally did and I know some of you did for them. Next thing you know, they're walking around prophetess. You can't tell them anything. They know more about God and some of them make themselves apostles. They know more about God. They done left us behind. But I tell you one thing more, I don't worry about it. That scripture right there. I don't worry about a person leaving me behind because if he thinks Satan is chasing him, he's on the wrong side of history. Come on, if he thinks Satan is chasing him, he's well. chasing Satan. Let me tell you something about thinking. Uh -huh. Let me tell you something about thinking. Well, If you're in a 26 mile marathon. Uh -huh. Did you hear what I said, the other God? Mm -hmm. A 26 mile marathon you're in. The reason I say the other God because she's in that marathon. Sometimes when you're speaking to people, God put things on your mind and uh, and we need to be careful because the Holy Spirit is moving and we're moving. I need everybody to kind of let God move. But anyway, talk about that 26 mile marathon. Uh -huh. See, that's what I'm talking about, my thinking, right? I'm sitting here preaching, but I'm thinking. I'm trying to get my thinking back up. Because when something comes important to me, I'm going to be looking to see what's going on. But anyway, you're in a 26-mile marathon, right? Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Come on. And you look around, there ain't but 10 people around you at the finish line. You run to the finish line. You got a mile to go to the finish line. Uh -huh. Ain't but 10 people with you. And you're like, Man, ain't nobody with me. This race must be over. This race must be about over. Everybody must already pass the finish line. You so far out in front, you don't see nobody with you. You don't know you're out in front. Come on, now. That, to me, that is ridiculous. I'm always gonna be in the front. I'm always gonna be in the front. I always have been in the front. So it ain't a whole lot of people in the front. See, so you're like, man, I wonder why this church is not doing this. I wonder why this is not doing this. You're so far ahead. <laughs> Y'all know I'm talking, right? I mean, the Holy yeah. Spirit, the Holy Spirit, I know you know I'm talking, right? You're so far ahead. When you listen to some people that, that you talk to, you're like, wow, I'm so far ahead of them. I didn't even realize it. And then another reason you know you're so far ahead of them, you start becoming popular. Everybody likes you. Your name is on it. Your name's on everything. They can't wait to be around you and talk to you. People start gravitating to you. Why? Because you're in the head of the race. You're in the front of the race. Uh, you're on, no God. longer thinking like a child. Well, you put away childish things and childish thinking. And thinking and acting is the whole concept of what's going on in this world today. Well, people are demonstrating. Out there, uh huh. Let me put it this way to you: When Christ was being crucified, Pilate said it this way. Pilate said, 
Okay, this, I see no wrong in this man. This man has done nothing wrong. <laughs> but since you're determined to put him away and crucify him, uh, since this is a certain day, your past or whatever it is, I got two people. We're going to release one of them. Barabbas or Christ. Uh-huh. And what did the protesters say? Barabbas. They said crucify him. They were saying crucify Christ. They didn't only say they want to be Barabbas released. They said crucify him. Amen. This is, look, and guess what they were? Y'all don't know what they were. No, they were paid protesters. Y'all didn't know they had paid protesters in the Bible. Yeah. Look it up if you think I'm wrong. They were paid to get out there and get false accusations on Christ and what he said. By two or three women, they were paid protesters. And they said, and they got the whole crowd behind them. Mm -hmm. They had the whole crowd saying crucify Christ behind him because a few of them had been paid to try and break him down. But the one thing about God, he already thought about it. Amen. What you're talking about, what you're doing, what I'm doing. God has already thought about it. The day that God has put us together uh -huh. in unity, there's going to be a day that God's going to have you doing something else. You don't have to worry about what day comes that God's going to have you doing something else. What you got to worry about is do you be ready when God have you doing something else. Amen. Hallelujah. That's what you got to worry about is mm -hmm. be ready when God has you doing something else. Well, well. You don't see I'm struggling, right? Mm -hmm. Oh God You oh, gotta be good. ready when God has you doing something Amen. See that's what I'm talking about, about How can two walk together except they agree yeah. When you have someone Even a child Can turn a whole service around Or in a store to pump. Anything that's out of order People would order See the more you love God mm -hmm. The more you know about God Amen. Sometimes the less tolerance you have For people that don't know nothing Come on Pastor That's right Ignorance is not blessed, but knowledge can hurt you. Yeah. When you know something that don't nobody else know, and you up there trying to witness to one of your cousins or your brothers, and they want to say, hey, how do you always want to be around that person? All they do is talk about the Lord. And you want you love them so much, you see so much good, in, but they don't want to hear anything you have to say. Uh -huh. And it hurts you. Man. It hurts you. The more knowledge God gives you, do you understand that the Bible said that Christ Whip. Yes, sir. Yes. He wasn't laughing. Uh huh. Nope. It wasn't that he thought he was going to lose the race. It wasn't that he thought that he couldn't drink from the cup. He wept when he looked down and saw them. They hosanna, hosanna, hosanna. They wanted to lift him up, raise him up. He wept. He had no knowledge that he was the Messiah. They wanted to raise him up as a king, and he came to be crucified, Amen. to be slain for them. And he wept because they never realized uh -huh. that the hour of their visitation was about over and they didn't even know who they had, who they had among them. You see what I mean? Uh -huh. So when I was looking at this message uh, this morning about when I was a child, I said, okay, I was a child. And then says, I spoke as a child. It says this way, there is an old saying. Have y'all ever thought about old sayings? Amen. Uh, like uh, the fruit don't fall far from the tree or something yeah. like that. A uh, yeah. uh, bump on a log. I had one this. I had one the other day. Boy, they got some good old sayings. Them old sayings got some real good means. I wish I could get me a book on just old sayings. Don't go buy me one, y'all. I, I look it up on the internet. Sometimes people just, I see a book. I know I'm gonna give that to the past. I ain't reading a book. I'm gonna go on the internet. <laughs> You give me a book, it's going to send it. I, when I first got saved, I bought a $1,000 worth of books. Every book I could find. Paul, you might remember me buying all them books. I don't know where they are now. don't care. Because I look at it on screen. Or I let my screen read it to me. And God so loved the world that he gave his only big eye son. <laughs> Y'all know I've been listening, right? For that, that voice, right? Well, they're starting to sound more like us. Anyway, there's an old saying that the only difference between man and a boy. There's an old saying. Uh-huh. Uh -huh. Y'all don't know that old saying? Mm -hmm. Come on, y'all. There's an old saying that the only difference between a man and a boy is the price of his toys. <laughs> 
Don't be thinking about me on that now. I know y'all try to put that on me. Well, well, well. If the shoe fit, wear it. But one thing about it, brother, the race I'm in, when I get to the finish line, uh -huh. I'm gonna, I'm I'm gonna, Jesus don't have to wash my feet. They already been washed. When I get to the finish line, uh -huh. I'm gonna kick these shoes off. And I'm gonna see what how the other ones cross over that line. Mm -hmm. But there's no way. The Bible said the race is not given to the swift. Neither the strong. But those who what? do it to the end. So it's not so much that you're out there in front. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Are you going to finish? Yes, Lord. And see what happens with your thinking. Mm -hmm. See, I, I was listening to Elder Cooper the, uh, this morning. I mean, listen, I was listening to Pastor Margo and she was saying it. I'm listening. I'm saying, okay, I'm trying to get the spirit in the right mood to come up here. And Elder Cooper saying, what she uh, kind of been through this week or what have you. And my thing is, oh my God, God is preparing you for something. See, when God prepares you for something, before he gives you something new, he gonna let you simmer a little bit, meditate what you're about to give up, that old stuff. Amen. You don't go, look, I was coming to work this morning, I didn't even know I was gonna say this, a new level, that's what was on my mind when I was coming to church this morning, a new level. In order to, what is a level? A level is another stage. Yeah. Faith to faith, glory to God, another yeah. level. Well, when you go to another level, you can tell you don't even know you left the last one sometime. Oh. Yeah. But if you look back, you know that you left it. Yeah. My elder over there and his wife, they made a choice a few, uh, maybe a year or so ago, and, and had to make a change. They didn't necessarily want to make the change, but they end up making a change because of our say of God. Not Amen. because of anything they plan to do, anything they want to do. And then they had to be led by the Spirit of the Lord in order to uh, make sure that the change they were making was right. You can't, when you when God has you make a change, you can't look around the circumstances and say, well, uh, this is where I need to be. No, you better hear from the Holy Spirit. He'll tell you, the Bible said, my sheep know my voice. And when God is preparing you, sometimes it don't feel good. When God is preparing you, sometimes Amen. you don't know he's preparing you. Nope. But you have to walk by faith. Why? Because you're just. Mm -hmm. you got to walk by faith. Well. You, it, you'll never get where God wants you to get if you're not just. And what happens to a just? The just person got to walk by faith. You cannot walk by faith if you think like a child. We're not talking about childlike faith. That means trusting your mama. Childlike faith is trusting your mama no matter how hard it's raining outside. No matter how much lightning it is, if you just a little baby lay your head on your mama's chest or breast, you all right. I don't care about the lightning. I don't care about nothing. I got mama. But when you get to be a man, daddy gonna say you better get over there in that corner. Amen. This is my mama, not yours. Amen. <laughs> they ain't for you no more. They for me. Get over, there. get over that corner. When I was a man, I'm not a child. We got some men in here. That need to hear this word. Amen. We got some women in here. The world is so messed up right now yes, because is. of what they're thinking. And we could say, well, God didn't give them his word. He didn't give his only begotten son. There's not enough preachers preaching. No. they. It, it doesn't matter what a man knows. It's, it, it matters what a man wants to do. What a man has decided to do. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. A child, an infant. Our infant don't even speak. So how does an infant speak to let you know he got a problem? So like some, like some, they, the world calls the people like that, there's men that cry like infants, they call them whiners. Yep. So you got some whiners. And some people, it's all right to whine up maybe a little while. But when you get to be a man, you're going to have to, a woman, you're going to have to stop whining. Amen. And you might not know you're whining. Somebody will say, Stop whining. <laughs> Somebody say, stop whining. Stop whining. I've been told that's a bad feeling for a man to hear that. That's a bad feeling. Stop whining. That's a bad feeling. But guess what? That's a, a, a kind of a good stage when you get into that whining stage and you're Christian, you're a good friend, you know, okay, okay, Father, what you trying to do? Okay, Lord, what you trying to do for me? What you trying to tell me? What am, I got? I know I'm not supposed to be whining, so I need me some more God, or I need some more understanding. I need some more faith. I need enough. I'm about to go to what? 
another level. Don't ever think that you don't need his grace. Uh -huh. I don't care how much knowledge you get, you're going to need the grace of God because he told Apostle Paul, my grace is sufficient. If you don't have the grace of God, you're not going to stay saved. If you don't have the grace of God, I don't care how much authority and knowledge that God has given you over Come Satan. On, you're not going to be able to stand against the wilds and the devil because it's God's grace that we need. It's a grace. It's What is that grace? It's that unmerited favor. It's where you don't go and lay in his bosom. Come on, Pastor. He comes and puts his arm around your back uh -huh. and pull you in. Yeah. Well, well. That's what grace does. Say, you don't need no love. Come here, boy. Come, come uh -huh. here, girl. Come, come up here. Come up here. Wow. Oh, 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 I could say it like very well. Oh, babe. Can't get enough of your love. Hey, God, come here. Uh -huh. come here. Y'all know what I'm saying. That sound. Right? Wow. <laughs> a bird came up there. They died and went to heaven. They had his long hair. I think they were trying to look like Jesus. <laughs> oh, Lord. Let me get off that <laughs> Wow. Uh -huh. Come on, you know, I just love how God has created this earth. Amen. You can hear the birds singing in the morning. Yes. You can see everything going astray, everything yes. going wrong. Everybody can be talking negative all day long around you, and all you have to do is say, My God, it's a great day. Yes, my God, God I'm fearfully and wonderfully. Amen. I love the Lord. Come on, I am ridiculously happy. Uh -huh. Lord, this is a day the Lord has made. Well, it, may, it may get mad, but God will make you glad Come on, when you look at things that way. So you right. better look at it that way. Why? Because you have taken your mouth, instead of acting like a child, you have acted like a man or a woman of God. You spoke life into your situation. Uh -huh. Doesn't mean that we all going to get down sometimes. Yeah. Doesn't mean that we're going to say some things that don't really glorify God. Sometimes we want to act like a child or we want to uh, 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 whine a little bit. Yeah. But there's somebody mm -hmm. next to us. They can always build us up. It's a good thing when you love somebody and they well, make you feel bad because that shows you love. Like Martin Luther King said, it can be not a great love, a great mm -hmm. hurt without a great love. You're not going to have a great hurt unless there's a great love. Oh, Hallelujah. Lord. But when the Bible tells you to love your enemies as you love your friend, he's not talking about in love with somebody. You know how you go find somebody and you fall in love with them? You ain't got no business falling in love with them, but you're going to fall in love with them. You done made him look like a prince. You done dress him up like this and fall in love. That ain't what he mean by love your enemy. He says, uh, <laughs> I mean, love your labor. And you love your, it's a just, a, it's not, no emotions to deal with it. No emotions in it. He ain't talking about, oh, you can't hug him all day and let him go and all. No, he's talking about just love your neighbors you love yourself. It's, a, it's just a, a thought, an idea, it's a thinking like a child. You just make a decision to love those people that you love yourself. No emotions in it. Mm. When you get your emotions in it, that's when you get messed up. Lord, <laughs> that's when you <laughs> when your emotions get in it. That's when you come in church and had a fight with your husband. Yeah. <laughs> Somebody don't want to go to church. <laughs> Somebody don't want to hug nobody in the church. <laughs> Watch out, Pastor. But that's, that's a natural thing because that's that kind of love. That's the kind of love God talking about. God said, love your neighbor. If you give you got a piece of bread, give him a piece. Yeah. He talking about going in. That's oh, I love, I'm, I'm going to die because you're going to die. I'm setting myself on fire. No. Mm. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. So we're talking about a child, an infant, not speaking, a minor. Uh, Childish, immature, uh, simple-minded person. Mm -hmm. Have you ever seen people that simple-minded? They don't know they're simple-minded. Yes. They just chatter, 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 chatter all day. Like they come to church, everything wrong, 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 wrong. And they always chatter, and nobody's ever told them. And this is the message they need to hear. Nobody's ever told them you in between that child stage and that uh, that mature Christian. Yeah. If you don't ever get that mature Christian stage, people are gonna be running from you. Uh -huh. You know? And so when you see people come in, they're trying to know God, they're trying to get to that stage, they talk to you a little bit. This is this is this is where they are. Amen. So figuratively speaking, we're talking about uh, when we say true, we're talking about immature, simple minded. Uh a man is distinct from a boy or an infant. 
Paul says, we said this way, put away childish things. Uh -huh. means abolish. To do away with completely. Put away childish things. Abolish childish things. Uh -huh. There should be no childish things in a mature Christian. We should put them away. Ab abolish them. But when Jesus was talking about the law, he said, I didn't come to he said, I didn't come to abolish the law. Can you imagine being unequally yoked? Mm -hmm. You married to a child. Mm -hmm. And you want counseling. Mm -hmm. That's going to be a hard deal. Because you can't counsel a child and an adult. The child got to grow up. You don't never see a child growing up through just counseling. They may be counseling to help them grow up. But growing up is a natural process by peers and being elevated and looking around you and see how, what everybody else is doing and, and doing the right thing. Hallelujah. So we're not talking about abolishing the law when Jesus was talking about the law. He said, I didn't come to abolish the law. Uh -huh. He said, I came to complete the law. The law well. is good within itself. The only thing the law had, it didn't have power to save you. The law would show you as a school teacher. The law, God gave Moses the law, and the law had some power. Amen. You know how I know. When I thought I was thinking about the law the other night, and all of a sudden, and, and, and the, I had a vision with a man with a stone. And I'm like, what's this stone? Well, the stone was the power behind the law. Uh -huh. The stone was the power behind the law. Uh -huh. Now, policemen got bullets. Because Crooks got some bullets too. But what I'm saying is uh, Christ didn't abolish the law. The law was good to let you know that you were doing something wrong. The law is still working to let you know you're doing something wrong. But guess what? It won't save you. Amen. What will save you is the goodness, the grace Amen. of Jesus Christ. And the method in which God have established salvation through Christ, mm -hmm. through man, through a whole nation of people. So that's why when... God, but when a man is thinking, when God comes in, when Paul says, you're no longer a black man. Uh -huh. No longer a Jew. You're no longer, he's talking about in the spirit, you're no longer male. Yeah. You're no longer female. See, a lot of times, you're male and female when it comes to your body, when it comes to your relationship, when it comes to your mates. But when it comes to the gospel, there's not male, no female. There's not bond or free. Come so on, if you start thinking on those terms, yes, you're already thinking beyond what God, the way God wants you to think in the New Testament age. Well, well. If, if he didn't think that way, he would have tried to set every slave free when Jesus came in. But he didn't set every slave free as far as went from man. He set every man that was enslaved to sin free if he chose the gospel. Amen. Every man is free. So, we are sitting here today and our mind is telling us one thing uh -huh. and our flesh is telling us something else. And the Spirit of the Lord is telling us another thing. When you put yourself into a school system. Come on, come on Pastor. And you're working all the time. Come on. Now here's a system that will work all the time. That every word is true. Every word is, is, is a seed. Every yeah. word is going to bless you. But when you take yourself and put yourself into another system. Like Pastor Margo is getting ready to go to school with. Ella Cooper's going, when you start going there and you got to pass the test, your mind better be on what they want, not what God wants. Amen. They've already discreet and they're going to grade you on how you think. Come on, Pastor. And if you don't watch it, depends on what course you take, your thinking may sometimes rival with your, uh, your, your, the Word of God sometimes. Because we know that the school is not the place to go to get saved, but they got some saved people in the school. So Amen. when you start taking on uh, 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 more responsibility and lecturing and, and high education, oh my God, you're going to have to understand that you can't put yourself in their situation because you are beyond them. You're trying to come down. Like God said, he said, uh, Abraham, mm -hmm. have you heard about where a lot of this is? Lamar? Let me go down there and take a look. God said, let me go down to Solomon and Gomorrah and take a look. And see what's going on. And he said, should I, should I destroy this thing? I can't do this thing without letting Abraham know. See, so what happened when you are going to school. And, and, and you're dealing with all these different ideas. All these different words. All these different meanings. All different teachers. And you're a minister of the gospel. And been in the gospel. You're going to have to go down sometime and take a look. Uh -huh. Yeah, you don't look from this way. 
Oh, no, you look down. This, how do you think they built this highway going around Fort Bragg? You think they didn't go up and take a look? Yeah. Ain't no way in the world they could have took some things and stayed on the ground and built that highway where we can get all the way through Fort Bragg and not go through uh, Bragg Boulevard. I think that roads whatever, but they had to go up and look down. Hallelujah. I didn't mean to go that way, so let me go back and get back. Um, it says, because man has put away childish things. How does a child act? Impressionable, gullible, manipulative, manip manipulative, manipulative. Once I got that tooth in there, some words I used to say. But they won't give me a real one. Controlling. Think about some of your members. Man man manipulative, controlling, selfish, self-centered, self-indulged, cruel. Yep. Mischievous. That's what children do. Uh, I got one running around there right now. Mm -hmm. Running around right now. Can't nobody do anything with it. <laughs> right, now, right now. Nobody can do anything with it. But guess what? You got some church members like that. Yes, Lord. They'll show up when they grow up. But I'm going to tell you something. If you got to compare your life, you don't compare your life with other church members. Amen. If you are a foot and another church member is a hand, uh -huh. you gonna have to wipe, wash your feet a lot more than you wash your hands. Uh -huh. Or really need to wash both of them, but the hand won't stick like the foot will. Come on now. You can tell when you didn't wash your feet. <laughs> you can't tell when you don't wash it. What I'm saying is two different parts of the body. Uh -huh. It's two different types of members. It's two different types of members. And they're all not going to be treated the same way. The Amen. foot can't say they don't need the other one. But the foot is going to need a lot more care than the hands. Uh -huh. Right? Yes, right? Yes, but if you hurt your hand, there's a lot of things you won't be able to do. Amen. So what's wrong with the church today? Mm -hmm. It's the way they think. Come on, Pastor. Uh -huh. It's the way the church thinks. What's wrong with marriage today? It's what we think. Uh -huh. Not just the wife, but the wife and the husband. It's certain things. And let me tell you something. You don't go into marriage trying to do what your mama did. Amen. If I went to marriage trying to do what my daddy did, I'd be fussing day and night. Uh huh. Because back in the day, that's what they did. You heard of, uh, what's his name? Archie Bunker? Yeah. yeah. Sit down. You know, that's what they did in them days. Uh, so we don't we don't do that no more. When we get upset now, somebody got to keep quiet. Amen. That's right. Those who are more spiritual keep quiet. Peace be still. Until the other one don't learn to act like their daddy, or that woman don't learn to act like her mama. Well, well, unless, well. Uh, unless now, unless that mama was like she knew how that that virtuous woman, she knew how to. Have no business, right? Come on, Pastor. Okay. So now we say, a child, it says right here, how does a child act? And we know the child's impressionable. What, that means gullible, manipulative, controlling, selfish, self centered. Have you ever seen a Christian like that? Uh, self indulged, cruel, and mischievous. Now, you got people like that, they don't know they're like that. And when I'm here, tell them, Telling you like that, you can minister to them because you know a whole lot of them came to your mind when I said that. They can be ministered to. They can be get on the right to being a teenager instead of what do they call a teenage when you go from the teenage pre -teen. stage before you get to the young adult stage. What's pre -teen. this? No, they're not preteen. They call it uh, adolescence. You got some Christians adolescents right now. We need to well. we need to raise them up. Come on, Pastor. We need to raise them up to another level. They're in the adolescent state. And they don't know it. They're not bad people, but they can't sit down and be quiet. They can't listen to no word. They can't take no advice. And then when their life is tore up from the floor, well, they got to go somewhere. That's how it works. Your children work like that. You know, I got a friend that tried to take his son and put him in the business and, and just, I'm going to give him all this, I'm going to retire. And the boy was young, boy didn't want to do no business, that boy wanted to play a while. He had to get out there in the street a while. Yeah. He had to, you know, he had to do some things, he had to get shot up. Yeah. I ain't talking about with shots either, I'm talking about with that. Uh -huh. And now, after a certain age and stage, now he's doing his own, he's coming back. 
It take you can't take a child. Have, what do you think about these millionaires? They raise a child, put them in the best schools and everything. Now they've equipped them educationally, but that child's still not going to be any good unless he learns something. But it's still great to raise him right. Amen. It's right. still a great idea to raise him the way he should go. So we don't. But you know, some of your children that you might be, uh, you might not have been saved when, uh, when, when, when we had these children. Now you say you expect them to act a certain way. And even if you say some of them, they got the blood of their daddy in them. You say act like you're, you're just like your father. Yes, they are. Jesus even said, I'm just, he just said, you see my father? You see me? Amen. So they spoke as a child. They spoke selfishly. They repeat without any sense of ownership or conviction. They repeat things that's in the church. You tell them something they're on the phone for you, hang up. Tell them somebody else. Amen. And when they get the telegraph, it's all over town. Y'all know the telegraph, right? Amen. It don't stop in North Carolina. Well, well. It, goes, it might even go overseas and then somebody will see. Because it's just, they're in that stage. That's childlike stage. Spoke as a child. Spoke... Selfishly. Y'all know what I'm talking about now. Whether you find yourself in this category or not, you got to grow up. And some of us are going to do that. Speak out of their feelings. How many people you know that speak out of their feelings? Well, well, well. You know how that sucks? I don't care what nobody say. Amen. If I think so. If I think so. If I think so, I'm going to say it. The Bible don't the Bible speak against that. Make it fun. Gifts at, and guess what? It comes a time when they will learn that. But maybe the day is not the time. So we don't need to, you know, we just need to understand that we're teachers. We need to understand that th this is a message that I don't, I won't say that I'm jumping for joy to preach. Because uh, I find myself in it sometimes. We all got some childish ways. They speak out of their feeling. They will, uh, they will. Take tendencies. One moment Amen. they're cruel, and the other time they're just as nice as they can be. Hallelujah! Have you ever seen anybody like that? Amen. You know, Amen. One Hallelujah. moment they're cruel, and the other moment, man, and but and they love telling people off. I know some people right now. <laughs> they love telling folks off, like they have no problem themselves. They tell Amen. Them off. And wonder why they speak on the path. After a while, nobody want to be around. The the worst thing about that is when they get to be an old person. Okay. They won't have no visitors. The tongue. Proverbs 15 and 2. Put that up there. 15 and 2. El Gali, you read that for me. Proverbs 15 and 2. Now, what we're saying to you is at the stage and level in your life, the uh -huh. reason you're going through anything, anything, is your fault. Not God's fault. When Abraham, if you look in the Bible, everything that Abraham want, went through uh -huh. was, was his own fault. Come on, Pastor. Anything that God had him to go through, God was going to bring him out of, right? Amen. So anything Abraham went through and took a shortcut, he got in trouble. Yes, sir. But thank God that Abraham did the right things at the right time. Uh huh. Can you read that, first, that scripture for me? Yes, sir. Proverbs 15 and 2. The tongue of the wise uses knowledge aright. But the mouth of fools pours out foolishness. Ooh. Mouth of fools. Okay. A man will speak before he talks. A child will spew. Will spew it out. Have you ever, and, and, and look, there's some, some of that is in all of us. Because, you know, and then you got some people that have learned to be quiet. But they won't even speak up when it's necessary. Yeah. So you got well, that too. Well, well. Hallelujah. You got that too. Hallelujah. A child would just speak his mind without considering how his words will fall. He is not discreet or considerate how he talks. Understanding as a child to excuse, to exercise the mind, to adopt an opinion, to think. How does a child child mind work? How does he think? How does he formulate an opinion? Now we know how a child formulates an opinion because he's thinking as a child. He's a mass of manipulation. Selfish. Simple. He don't use simple reduction. Impressionable. He mimics in the opinion of those that he look up to. You ever see somebody 
that don't have their own mind, but they look up to anybody that's got an opinion they like. And they say, you know, yeah. it may be wrong, but they still like it. Yeah. And Press more mimic the opinion of those he look up to and admire and sway to the fro, uh, whatever that is. They have to be taught deductive reasoning and how to critically think. James 1, 5 through 8. Let's put that up there. A double-minded man is unstable in uh -huh. all his ways. A man, a man will be focused on and sure and firm-footed in what he does and if he has a strong conviction. But a double-minded man. How not to be double-minded is to understand that the ways that we used to believe when the Word of God tells us to believe something else or we do something else another way. In order not to be a double mind, we have to adopt God's view as our view. Come on. Abortion. Abortion. I don't expect you to go around thinking about abortion all the time. You know somebody that's had abortion because we know Satan's after the seed of the woman. I'm not letting that go because God gave it to me. The seed of the woman. Satan is going to strike at the seed of the woman, but the woman is going to have enmity with Satan because God put enmity, hatred between the woman and, and Satan or, or the, the, uh, and her seed. So Satan's after the seed. So when we see a nation that's going in the direction of abortion, I mean, how many times do we see, we got a vanilla back there holding a precious little baby. And a lot of times, remember people used to walk up and say, oh, that's a beautiful baby. I don't care if the baby was black, white, or what. Everybody woke up to you and said, that's a beautiful baby. Mm -hmm. Nowadays, people see a woman uh, that's pregnant, they act like something's wrong with it. They be looking away and be like, what is wrong with you? Yeah. Like the Me Too movement. You don't hear much about that no more, right? Because all the Me Too's were... <laughs> hey, man, come on. All the Me Too's were Hollywood. Yeah. <laughs> once they... Once they found out they weren't all on the other side. I'm trying to tell you what manipulation is. What thinking is. What we have to do is think like Jesus. Jesus said, my father so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. And Christ came in the world not for us to be downtrodden, brokenhearted. For us to be on, a part of the body. We need a hand. We need an ear. We need a foot. We are something special in the body. And in order to be special in the body, we don't have to worry so much about what our gift is. We kind of know our gift right now. We have to understand how to use the authority that God gave us. We have to understand how to use the authority that God gave us. What authority? He said, by what authority do you do these things? By what authority do you do these things? What authority do you what? Where do you get the authority? You can't do nothing. You can't nothing. do nothing, nothing without authority. Nothing. When Jesus saw the centurion, I'm trying to tell you uh -huh. how this whole thing. When he saw the centurion's soldier, and the soldier said, You don't have to come to my house, I'm not worthy. Come on, just send the word, speak the word. Speak the word. And I already know the authority. I'm under authority. So uh -huh. I recognize you have authority. Jesus didn't say, This well, man well. had great authority. He said, this man got great faith. Uh -huh. Why? Because this man know what authority is. You yeah. can't be a child of God no, and not be under authority. Yes, well, well. There's something happening when you're not where you're supposed to be when you're supposed to be there. Mm -hmm. Authority. By yeah. what authority do they do? When you don't listen to authority, when you're not under authority, when you make your own rules because uh -huh. there's nobody paying you to be in church. Yeah, yeah, there's nobody yeah, yeah. paying you to be a minister. There's yeah. nobody paying you. So now you're making your own rules. And what's going in your mind, you're not hearing from the pastor all the time, but what's going in your mind is something other than the word of God. So when Come Jesus on, came in, he knew who he was. But yet, yeah, everybody knew his mother. Everybody knew his father. Yeah. And he did no miracles. And so when he starts speaking, he was like, who is he? Uh -huh. now, we know him. We didn't know he could talk like this. My God, who is he? And, they, and, and even when he was 12 and was speaking in the synagogue, they said, where's this child get all this wisdom from? He had all the wisdom of the whole world. He didn't yeah, lose it. He just laid it aside. Yeah. So when he was 30 years old, he got baptized. Wow. John the Baptist, God called him into ministry. Uh -huh. He was 30 years old. And when he was baptized and called to ministry, yeah. he was called. Hallelujah. To demonstrate the gospel to the church. Wow. To, uh, to bring forth the apostles and mm -hmm. put the church 
family together, the body of yes. Christ together, and to teach them the gospel and to show them what authority was. Yes. And he took three years to show them. And so therefore, when he died and went to heaven, Peter and, and uh, James said, Said silver and gold have we not? Uh -huh. We don't have those, but we got authority. Authority. We got authority. Authority. That same authority is in you. Uh huh. You may not believe it. You might not see it. Authority. But that God did not take the authority from them boys. You have the same authority. Uh huh. Silver and gold have we not? The only healing that's gonna take place is through the church. Amen. The only healing gonna take place is through prayer. Yes. The only healing gonna take place. If you miracle, not only do he he give authority in the church to heal, but he's got people with special gifts for healing. Come on, now, a lot of people got special gifts for healing. Oh yeah, they all attract they bring people all over the world. But it's good too because it brings people in contact with God that would never be healed because all the church is sitting on their hand waiting for somebody to tell them what to do. Come on, Pastor. Nobody told you couldn't go pray for somebody. Amen. Nobody told you couldn't go in the hospital. Come on, Pastor. On your relatives and speak when everybody's speaking down. Wait for them to leave the room. Don't put them out. They'll put you out. Say so. Wait for them to leave the room and pray to them. We got some things in the church that might not be right, but guess what? We got a hand. We got a foot. We got to understand that some people are thinking like children. Some people in the wine and say some people are not in the mature say for those that are more spiritual. We have to restore these people. We don't run them out the church. Come on, I don't man. care who they are. We don't run them out the church. We have well, to well. Stay in the church. And the way we do that, we understand what level they're at. We understand what it took us to get where we are. And Amen. while we're helping them, God is moving us to another level. And guess what else? While we're helping them, God is teaching us Amen. how to deal with those he's going to put in our midst. He's Come teaching on, us. He's teaching us. So he don't call us not to be the head. He always calls us to be the head. God never called you to be the tail. The only reason you're the tail is because you're the thinking of the tail. God has called you to be blessed. Hey, God is good. If I buy something uh -huh. and I'm beside you and I make you mad because I bought it, you pay for it. Amen. I got people right now paying for my meal every time I go out with them because 10 years ago, every meal that they got when they ran out me, I paid for it. But it came a time uh -huh. that I couldn't pay for that meal, but guess what? They had money to pay for mine. So what I'm saying, you every seed you sow, you in a you in a blessed stage. Come on, God. You're in a blessed stage. When you don't understand something, you're in a perfect situation where God can pour his warmness and his spirit Amen. on you and bless you. And sometimes you don't have to know who you are. Other people tell you who you are. For Jesus said, who do men say that I am? I am. Who do people say that I am? Jesus said, and then he said, well, who are you? I am. Preach. To the mountain be removed and don't doubt in your heart. Amen. When you got doubt in your heart, without a doubt, you're a doubter. Amen. But you have to understand, and you're like, why does it take me so long to learn this? That's what I ask God. I used to try to wonder how I get more faith. I used to read about it. Faith come by reading. Hearing. Hearing. Well, I heard the word, I just didn't understand. It. I read it over and over. I had all the books I didn't understand. But one day, one when day. you get enough foundation, uh -huh. when you get enough lines and precepts. Uh -huh. Then God will give you the revelation. But why should he give you the revelation if your heart's not right? If all you're going to do is do it to insult people. Come on, Pastor. Oh. Your motive's got to be pure. Oh. Do you know that your level, every level of ministry in this ministry right now, every single one of you are being tried Amen. to see where your heart is, to see if you will stick with the ministry, to see if you, all they got to do is show you're smaller than the pastor because I couldn't pronounce manipulation. I just did it, but I couldn't do it a minute ago. Manipulation. Amen. Manipulation. I used to say it all the time. Because I used to do it all the time. Well, well. Now what I'm trying to tell you is, uh -huh. as you think, that's who you are. 
If you think you're nobody, you're nobody. Amen. If you think the devil is after you, he's after you. Come on, God. You should be after him. If you don't understand that the only reason your children are living is because you're decreeing and you're asking God to save it. If you understand that the angels are Come on, I saw a video on, on Facebook uh -huh. where a person was walking across the street and a car was coming and something that showed like a man come, come out of nowhere and took the person across the street. When I heard that story about 20 years ago, my uncle said that they, a car was coming around going to hit him and, and Pastor Bobby I was in Baltimore with. And said, next thing you know, they were on the sidewalk. They didn't know how they got there. And they used to tell it. I couldn't believe it then, but I knew they believed it. Now I'm understanding that angels hearken to the word of God. You're not yeah. using it. Come on, Pastor. Look, Satan wants you to get down on yourself. Self-pity is no business for an elder, a pastor, uh -huh. a minister. A deacon. When you find a person with self pity, you're going to find whining. You're going to, you're going to find dissatisfaction, disagreement, and you're going to find that Satan has got you on target. He's going to try you. Yes, he is. I don't envy nobody's position. You know why? Because I was a private once. That means everybody in the army told me what to do. Everybody that wasn't a private. I'm talking about a PV1. Then I was a PV2. Now PFC could still tell me what to do. It took a long time before I could tell somebody what to do. A long time. And even when I got back to tell people what to do, I still had some, somebody telling me what to do when I was Sergeant Major. When I was Sergeant Major, I still had people telling me what to do. And guess what? I heard I had a colonel that was a mani manipulation he used all the time. Because he was trying to satisfy people that was under me. The troops was, was getting their leaders to come against me through the colonel, through their leaders, and the colonel was coming against me so he could, he was like King Saul. King Saul was trying to satisfy the people rather than satisfy God. So the colonel would try to manipulate me, but he didn't understand I'd already been qualified. You could, no, sir, you better take that, that, that you better play that card someplace else. When I came down the street, everything moved. All the troops did. And I used to have officers come up to me and look at my, back then, master wings and combat packs for something. they come up and just look at them, lieutenant. You know, and I love those uh, officers because I understood that God bring young officers in that are going to keep the army strong. And, and yeah. NCOs was not going to do it. So you got to understand God's got a system. And it's called authority. Yeah. Authority. You are in authority. And if you don't know how to use your authority, don't let God ask you well, about well. what authority is. He said, he told Miriam like this and Aaron. He said, why were you not afraid uh -huh. to talk to Moses? We got people that get sick, they stay home. We got yeah. people that don't have a car, they stay home. Yeah. We got people, how in the world you ever going to get out of a hole is every time you get to the top of the hole, you go back down in the hole. You never going to get out of a hole. God don't just get out and pull you out the hole. He got to get you out the same way everybody else got out. They, cl they climbed out. Amen. When, when, when uh, Daniel was in the lion's den, uh -huh. God shut the lion's mouth. But Daniel had to walk out on his own. Now, if Daniel stayed in there and didn't walk out waiting for God to take him out, he'd, still, he'd be a dead man. Amen. God is doing everything he can for you. He's trying to let you know the authority he, you have. He's trying to let you know that you need the mind of Christ. He's trying to let you know that you got people around you that need to be encouraged, not discouraged. He's trying to let you know that when two or more come together, one can cause a thousand to fight and two can cause ten thousand. He's trying to let you know that prayer works when you come down into the house, Lord, and pray is for a particular thing. It's not so that you can get, get, get what you already got and so God can stop some things. So God can open some doors. So God can send some angels. So God can bless the church. So God can do what's got to be done. Come on, Pastor. The kingdom. Hallelujah. Not just, not just do it. You don't just get away with what you can get away with. And then you want to be somebody. You don't want to be somebody if you don't know you somebody. You got to know who you are. Well, well. You know why? Because the devil's told him, he said, Paul and Peter. I know. He said, we know Paul and Peter. I know. Paul and Peter might not even knew the, Knew that they know, know that they knew him. They might not have even known that they knew him. But I tell you one thing: when they came up, they didn't fool around with him. You have authority over demon spirits. 
but you can't do it without a word. Out no. of word. When the Bible says, don't lay hands, I hear y'all get around, oh, you lay hands. I mean, that's good. The Bible talks about don't lay hands on nobody. Suddenly, you know what that means? That means don't get up here and make them ministers. They, if they're not faithful, they're not going to show up if you promote them. Don't make them deacons. Deacon? <laughs> don't lay a hand. See, you got to lay hands a certain gift. No, you don't want everybody putting their hand all of y'all. But that's somebody who just. Therefore, don't lay hands. And Paul said, we stir up the gift. Uh huh. A lot of people don't want the pastor to lay hands on. Not that I want to lay hands on him, but every once in a while, you need that authority. Why? Come on, Because he operates as the authority in your life. And guess what he does? He delegates authority to you. So if you got delegated authority, you better know how to use it. Come on, Pastor. Am I right about it? Amen. And this is a good message. Are you learning something? Amen. Now, in order. To be a leader, uh -huh. you must be an example of one. Amen. Paul was on a ship. Mm -hmm. The angel told him the ship is going down, but God's going to save you. Well. Don't get off the ship. Don't jump ship. There's too many people jumping ship. And when they're jumping ships, guess who's jumping ships with them? All the rats. <laughs> you look on the ship, ain't no rats. The rats are so smart, they ain't got off the ship. The, the rats have threw stuff overboard to jump on. And all the rats jumped on you. Are, you you in the water with the rats. If they get hungry, they're going to eat you. Not just a jump. So the Bible says, it, 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 Paul he says, stay on ship. Stay on board. Paul stayed on board. He said, if you stay on board, you're going to make it. Why is the people so wishy-washy? You see them one week. Their faith is strong one week. Then the next week, you don't see them. You know why? Because they're looking at you. If everybody in here was George Washington, including me, we would have a church. George Washington, George Washington had volunteers. Oh. And then the y'all, yes, you don't hear nobody talking bad about George Washington. George Washington had some volunteers. So, <laughs> this thing right here is for all of us. We have to be an example. When, when people come in and they want to see a church, they're looking at everything they think they need. But I tell you what they do need, they need this word I'm preaching. If they don't get this word, I don't know where they're going to get it. But this is a word that I needed 10 years ago. Amen. A word I needed 10 years ago. Why be so quick to be promoted until you are sound in what you're doing already? Until you have achieved a higher level. Some people get promoted by talking everybody else down. <laughs> yeah. Now, there comes a time in your life when somebody gets something and it makes you feel bad. Because you can't get it. But the reason a lot of people can't get it is because they will not stay the course. And God got you in here just not just for you. He got you in here for the people. Because the people watching you, they're watching you. And we see people, you know, the worst thing in the world, the worst thing in the world for us to talk about somebody in the earth that's greater than us. The Bible never supports that. You don't talk about anybody that's done more than you done. How the world are you going to talk about somebody else and you can't come up to their shoestrings? Amen. And people that don't do nothing love to talk about people that's doing something. Amen. It's not that you need to worry about it. It's the fact that if the Bible says if you if you ain't if they ain't talking about you, you're not doing anything. So let them talk about you. But you got to understand what people say cannot move you emotionally because you have the authority that Jesus had. You can send the word to the house. My God. He said, my no, my so my servant would be healed. Jesus uh -huh. went to a house where they say she's dead. And Jesus said, she's only sleeping. They laughed him to scorn. They laughed at Jesus. He cleared the room. Now you heard me preach that Jesus did no act as God while he was in the world. Everything he did, he did as the son of man. So he did nothing of himself. He did it as Adam. As a seed of the woman. As a seed of the woman, right? Now, have you heard that been preached? It's been preached. I just got it. But it's been preached a long time. I just didn't get it. But I got it. Even the computer said, you got it? I said, I got it. The seed of the woman. If you brought children in the world, uh -huh. my God, your generation will last forever. Forever. And forever. And forever. And forever. 
you have God has used you to bring life into the world. And look at all the women that you haven't talked to that's killing the life that's in their body. I'm not just hopping on that. I'm trying to tell you, somebody said, well, you can't put God in politics. You can't take God out of them. The first king was made by God. Come on, Pastor. David was made by God. Say so. You can't take God out of it. If you take God out of everything, you might as well close it down because there's no man no that man. can do anything good without God. Every good and perfect gift comes from God. Come from God. There's no man. We don't look at the man. We look at how God made use of the trouble. Amen. We look at how God made use of it. When we see people... In, in the church, we see people that God can use. So, we don't so, look Pastor. at the bad part about them. We look at what's good in them. And we try to motivate that. And we try to encourage them to stay on course. My God, it's a lot of people going to the ice cream parlor. Yes. But I ain't seen nobody camping out overnight at the ice cream parlor. But yet when the Beatles came to town, they was four blocks around the corner say so. just to hear some words. He love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Just to hear some words. But the ice cream bar, which I love, I go there and ain't nobody camped out right there. Why? Because anything that good and that cheap, uh huh, we can get it whenever we want it. Amen. Amen. <laughs> anything that good and that cheap, why should I camp out for when I can go home? I can put it in the freezer. What I'm trying to tell you is the things that's in demand is going to cost you something. It's going to cost you something. Now, we got some things, some people in the church right now that God has put this church together and he's trying to build it up with leadership. And God knows you can see it if you look, if you open your eyes. Now, if, he, if you're going through a spot in your life that looks a little hard and difficult, it's because you took on so much and you need to. If you don't stretch yourself, if I was out here running 15 miles every day or just cut my grass every morning, y'all drove by, y'all make me go in the house and drink some water. Well, guess what? I'm doing something else. I'm going to the water. Take me to the water. <laughs> I'm going to the water. What I'm trying to tell you is your life is normal for what you're going through. Normal. To whom much is given, some of you don't, I mean, you don't know your gift. When a person like Ella Cooper or Ella Collin or Pastor Margo or especially the women, they come in and you see they uh, just a little down. You got to tell them how much they mean to you. People, I mean, you don't wait till everybody want to get on for two minutes. They want to go six minutes or seven minutes talking about how good you are. And, 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 and you know, you got all these people saying that you want to talk about how much you love them. And you want to talk about it more than anybody that was in the church. What I'm saying to you is people going through something. The church is a body of believers that encourage them. Don't think it's not strange when God sent so people in this church. Mary is one that God sowed in. Now when God pick up wildflower and give it to you, and you got it on your hand, it's a wildflower, right? Look out, gonna be some honeybees coming. And if you don't like bees, you'll be beating that flower that day. Bam, bam, you're gonna turn that flower up. If you're scared to be, oh, I forgot one bite, I'm dead. Dead there. Because <laughs> bees don't come for that flower. You can put some perfume on that got something that flower in it, and you have bees flying all around your head. But if you stink, you're going to have flies flying around. You. Why? Because Satan is the god of what? I don't mean one fly, y'all. I mean a whole bunch of. Hallelujah. So, what I'm saying today, trying to say to you today, is when I was a child, I spoke as a child, but when I became a woman or a man, I put away childish things. And some of the childish things you gotta put away, you can't whine and do things when you're elder or a minister or a deacon. You, you, so, you know, if the Holy Spirit's convicting you of anything that we're not doing as ministers, we're gonna have bad enough to have some bad habits. Might be that telephone. We got habits that don't nobody know about. Some of us that that mouth. No, sir. Somebody say something for it. They can get it out. We talking. We got bad habits already. We don't Amen, need to. Pastor. Amen. My God. We don't need to have habits we can correct. The church will grow if the Christians will do what they have to do. If the ministers and the leaders, when they come in, they're not just looking at the pastor. They're looking at you. Amen. They're looking at you. I don't care how hard you got it. You don't have it as hard as the disciples had it. Amen. 
Now, if you've got an extra job and you're making money because you want to work two or three jobs and you don't have time for God, I see a whole lot of them don't have time to come to church. Well, it, it depends on your situation. If you're trying to survive and pay your life bill, you got to do God will understand that. But you got to give God his time. Amen. you got a gift and you've been planted in the body to be a blessing to the church body. And everybody is expecting you to do that. And when you get down a little bit, your brothers and sisters should come to your rescue, to your aid. They should love on you because they know the sacrifices you're making. And everybody needs that, including the pastor. Amen. Right? Look at Lena over there. She soaked up everything. She's like a sponge. But how many people know Ella Cooper? No matter how much she soaked up, it's hard to catch up when we've been here for 20 years. You know, we've been steady for 20 years. But a lot of people in 20 years, they ain't no, no smaller than some people in church a year. Why? Because every time something got hot, they got up and ran out and left. They didn't, they didn't, they, they couldn't take the heat. What I'm, saying, I'm not trying to put them down. I'm trying to tell them that in order for God to make it hot, sometimes it ain't Satan. It's not Satan always making it hot. Satan can't do nothing to a Christian without permission. Come Certain on, things he can't do to you. That's right. You know who gives Satan the most permission to do things to us? We do through our mouth. Amen. God says, whoever curse you, he said, I will curse. Whoever bless you, I will bless. But if you go, I'm sick and tired. Man, I wish I was dead. God can't do nothing about that. You just curse yourself. What's he going to do? Curse you? You already cursed yourself. He can't curse you because you just cursed yourself. And he can't fix it. Who's going to fix it? You. So no matter how miserable, how sad you are, what you're going through, God said, I put no more on you can bear. If you got more on you than God, than you can bear, then either God is lying or you're not trying. Come on, pal. And I know God ain't lying. God will put no more on you no more. than you can bear. God will bless you in the city, Man. in the country. God will give you finances. God will take that sickness away from you. Cancer. Blood pressure. High blood pressure. Everything that you want to go, God will take from you. But you got to stand on the word. If God Amen. allowed you to live with it, you need to live with it. But God never told you to accept it. You don't accept anything like that. Yes, the enemy is trying to come. Guess what? He may have some permission for some of us. Some of us ain't going to serve God unless we sin. You know that, right? Yeah. And some sinners are going to come into the world that you're going to recruit into the world. They're going to get saved and they're going to die. I've seen it. You know why they're going to die? Because they got they died while they were still saved. Y'all ever seen anybody that can't stay away from the liquor store? Can't stay away from the marijuana plant? Now the world that we live in now is making everything legal. Jesus right. said, I did not come to abolish come on, the law. Man. He didn't abolish the law. He fulfilled it. What he did, he gave the law grace. It uh -huh. had no grace. It would have been stone. It had no mercy. He Be gave it now you don't have to take the stone and stone that woman because Jesus said he without sin, you cast her. So, so God broke the curse through Jesus. So Jesus came to set you in authority. Jesus came to set you in power. And from now on, you start thinking, don't think about your gift. Don't even think about your gift. Don't think about your title. You better think about your authority. If you don't know your authority, my God. If you don't know your authority, then you're wasting your time. Guess what else you need to know? Can a sheriff from Rayford come in Fayetteville with a warrant? He got to go through the police department, I believe. Amen. You got federal authorities. Hello. You got to understand what the world is doing. The world is trying to do away with authority. They're trying to do away. Come on, Christians. They're trying to do away. Why does Jerusalem and heaven need a wall? Why does Israel? Why did he put? I'm trying to tell you what God. Listen, what I'm telling you, God, the thing. Not as a child, not as black or white, not as a, a particular party. You got to think with the mind of God. Amen. And the Bible says God loves the world. I can't hate James Brown. I love him. You know, because I know God loves him. Amen. You know what I mean? We have come out from among them so that we can demonstrate the authority and power that God has in the world. Sickness, I bind up sickness in Jesus' name. You have no power, no dominion. The spirit of cast the spirit of 
uh, hepatitis B, A, whatever they want to call it. We bind you. We command you to go. So I'm saying, whatever you bind on earth, God's going to, it's already been bound in heaven. You can't bind anything on earth if it hasn't already been bound in heaven. So when you bind something on earth, all you got to do is know it's already been what? Come on, Pastor, bind. Bound in heaven. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's stand to your feet.